What do Asima Chatterjee and anyone that's watched M. Night Shyamalan's The Happening have in common? They both know the secrets in the plants. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Lift off. We have a lift off. 33 minutes past the hour. Lift off on a Hey everyone, welcome back to The Stimulus. I'm Steph Evs, and today we're doing another episode of STEM History, the series where I talk about people in STEM you may not have heard about in your history class, but you probably should have. Today we're talking about organic chemist Asima Chatterjee, the first woman to earn a doctorate of science in India. Asima was born on September 23, 1917 in what is now Kolkata, India. At the time, India was still under British rule. Asima grew up in a middle-class family with one other sibling. Her father was a medical doctor that also loved botany, an interest Asima shared with him. She was particularly interested in the medicinal properties of plants native to India, and this interest would play a huge role in her career. Her parents encouraged her to pursue her education, and Asima wound up graduating with honors in chemistry from the Scottish Church College in 1936, despite the fact that it was incredibly rare for a woman to be involved in higher education at the time, especially in a science field. Asima continued to break the mold and continued her education. She went on to earn her master's degree in 1938, and in 1944, she earned her PhD in organic chemistry from the University of Calcutta, making her the first Indian woman to earn a PhD in science. During her work for her PhD, Asima focused on the chemistry of plant products and synthetic organic chemistry and studied under P.K. Bose, a pioneer in the field of natural product chemistry in India. Following her education, Asima joined the Lady Brayborn College at the University of Calcutta and founded the Department of Chemistry there. From 1947 to 1950, she traveled to the United States to work with several researchers from the University of Wisconsin and Caltech, returning to India in 1950. In her final year of travel, she worked with Professor P. Carr of the University of Zurich on biologically active indole alkaloids, which would become her lifelong passion and area of focus. After returning to India, Asima became a reader in pure chemistry at University College of Science at the University of Calcutta in 1954. She remained in academia for the rest of her life to continue her research. She established a regional research institute focused on studying Indian medicinal plants, and through this work she made some groundbreaking discoveries with regards to medicine. She focused on researching various alkaloid compounds or organic chemical compounds that contain nitrogen and are mostly found in plants. Her work with vinca alkaloids from the Madagascar periwinkle plant played a key role in developing chemotherapy drugs to help slow and hopefully stop cancer cells from duplicating. In addition, she discovered anti-epileptic activity in Marsalea minuta, also known as the dwarf water clover. This discovery would play a pivotal role in the development of the epilepsy drug Ayush 56. In addition, Asima also discovered anti-malarial activity in multiple species of plants, which eventually led to the development of several anti-malarial drugs. Throughout her career, Asima published somewhere around 400 papers in various national and international journals and review articles. Her extensive writings have gone on to be frequently cited and included in textbooks. Nothing came easy for Asima throughout her career. At the time, any national science institutions were in their fledgling states, so money was hard to come by for research and lab upkeep. Asima often had to work in underfunded labs that were ill-equipped and didn't have adequate chemicals for research. Frequently, even simple analyses had to be done abroad, and the researchers had to pay for things like that out of their own pockets. Asima had to fight to establish herself among her male peers, many of which stood by her and supported and encouraged her, including the father of modern biochemistry in India, Baresh Chandraguha, and her husband, who was a renowned physical chemist himself. Her students described her as a very hard taskmaster that was never satisfied with performance and refused to compromise on her standard of work. Her work ethic was reflected constantly in her research and her teaching. She once said that she wished to work as long as she lived, and she surely did. Asima passed away on November 22, 2006, at the age of 89. Throughout her life, and even after it had ended, Asima received recognition and several awards for her work. In 1961, she became the first female recipient of the Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Award for Chemical Science. She became the first female scientist to be elected as the general president of the Indian Science Congress Association in 1975, and just the first woman to be elected to the organization, period. Also in 1975, Asima was awarded the Padma Bhusan by the Indian government. This is the third highest honor in the country that a civilian can be awarded. From 1962 to 1982, she served as the Cairo Professor of Chemistry, which is considered to be one of the most prestigious and coveted chairs at the University of Calcutta. 
On what would have been her 100th birthday, Google honored Asima with her very own Google Doodle, recognizing her as the first woman to earn a doctorate in science from an Indian university. Asima's legacy also lives on in her daughter Julie, who shared her mother's passion for organic chemistry and would grow up to become the head of the Department of Chemistry at the University of Calcutta. Julie's son, Ani Rudha, even pursued a career in life sciences and earned his own PhD working at Chitturanjan National Cancer Research Institute in Kolkata. He still works as a lecturer at St. Xavier's College in Kolkata. Over her career, which spanned an impressive 60 years, Dr. Asima Chatterjee not only broke the glass ceiling and laid the groundwork for female scientists in India, she also developed drugs that will impact the lives of millions of people around the world living with epilepsy or battling cancer. Her determination and perseverance in the face of adversity led to her permanently altering the medical field and opened the doors for additional research that will undoubtedly continue to change lives for the better. So that does it for this episode of STEM History. If you'd like to learn more about the life and achievements of Dr. Asima Chatterjee, I will include links to my sources down below, along with links to all of my social media and my Patreon page, so feel free to check that out in your free time. If you're enjoying this series and want to see more videos like it, along with all of my other STEM-related content, please feel free to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you never miss out on any of my future videos. If you know of any amazing STEM historical figures that you think deserve more recognition, leave them in the comments section down below or on the Stemulus Facebook page or send them to me on Twitter at, at the Stemulus using the hashtag STEM history and they just might make it into an episode. But with that, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week. Stay well, stay awesome, and I will see you next time.